forever. <coughs> Dog. Look, man. Where? Oh, I see. Wow. Oh, my. Bowen, look over there. Wow, is that Ooh, culture? Wow. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah. Las Culturistas. Hello, everyone. This is Matt, and we have a very special episode today with Literally, Shangela. I just recorded the episode with her. I am fully gagged. I saw Stars Born last night. I am also going tonight. I am also going tomorrow night. I am also going Sunday. There is a story be- behind why I'm seeing it four times. Do I have a sick disease? Yes. Um, but I'm very excited. The movie is absolutely fantastic. The conversation with Shangela, I cannot wait for you to hear. However, I did just want to get on here really quick and say it is just going to be me with Shangela on this episode because Bowen is what? Working this week. Now, I know some people have been reaching out and asking some questions about, you know, Bowen with his new job, which if you don't know what it is, you can look it up, bitch. Um, but I know there's been some questions about um, what's going to go on with Las Culturistas. Las Culturistas stays exactly the same. Bowen is still the Las Culturista that he has always been, or La Culturista. If you're going to hound me for my for my grammar, you vultures. Um, but, you know, we just really wanted to get Shangela while we could. And the nature of his schedule now is we're going to be recording on his off weeks. So, of course, there were some stuff throughout the rest of the year that I'm going to have some sisters co-host with me. Did some really, really fun episodes up in Toronto with Dave Mazzoni. And I'm super excited that Joel Kim Booster is going to be hosting my next um, show in LA, I Don't Think So Honey Live, at the region on December 5th. So, But that should really be it. Otherwise, Bowen is still around. I I know all my diehard Bowen fans are like clamoring for their bow. I am also clamoring for your bow. He's also my bow. Um, but I had to get Shangela while she was available. The woman is on a 181 city tour do- doing literal press all over the world for Star is Born. So I was so gagged. I'm sitting here with HBJ. He is shaking his head because he can't believe that we got her. We had to get her. This is such a fun, fun, fun episode. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Um, so here we go. Here's me with sh- literally Shangela Laquifa Wadley. Okay. Ding dong, Las Culturistas calling, and oh boy, can I tell you, we rented a breather for this moment. We are in Union Square. I traveled to the town today because this is, I actually, actually I'm pretty gagged that we even have you because this person is in the middle of a 181 city tour. Now, I don't think you guys might remember how many days are in a year, uh, roughly 365, potentially 366 if you fall on the leap. Um, but that's a lot. This is a busy human being also doing international press for, I think, the film of the year. And I have to tell you, listeners, I did go last night and it is as good as you've heard. It is stunning. It is unbelievable. A star is born. You also know my guest clearly from RuPaul's Drag Race season two, season three, all stars three. We know we've been around the RuPaul's Drag Race block. <laughs> Um, but this is truly an honor to welcome Shangela to Las Culturistas. Well, hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. I, there's never a time that you say hallelujah that I'm not cracking up laughing. I think it's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Oh, well, good. Because I say it a lot. So uh, you do. We're going to be laughing all day then. I love that. You just, it, didn't, <laughs> it didn't sneak into A Star is Born. It didn't because, you know, I was you know trying to be a professional. It was right. a character. I'm like, this is a character. However, you will find the word professional. You may want to listen for that one. Professional. <laughs> she didn't want to lose her liquor license. I saw your action. Thank you, baby. I was like, let's stay in business. This is what <laughs> this, this woman is feeling. I also, I have to tell you, like, couldn't have anticipated this movie more. It is beyond, I think, what I could have expected, not only in how great it is, but how much you guys are in it. Like, you and Willem are, have big parts in this movie. Like, what what was, when you got the script, or if there even was a script, because I'm hearing now a lot of it was improvised, did you think, wow, we're in this thing? No, there 100% was a script. Yeah. And, you know, the great thing about it is you never know what's going to end up in the final cut. Of course. And so I really didn't 
tell a lot of people about it. I was thrilled. I was thrilled when we shot it. Yeah. But I've been in situations before. I shot a, a role in a film called R.I.P.D. Right. And I sent mom. I was like, Mom, I'm in this movie. And she called me after. She goes, Baby, you ain't in that movie. Oh, shit. I said, No, Mom. I'm in drag. Duh. You probably didn't recognize me. <laughs> She's like, Baby, I know you. You are not in that movie. I'm familiar with you <laughs> yeah, in drag. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I didn't tell a lot of people about it because you yeah. never know what's going to make it. Of course. But in the end, when I first saw it last week in London, mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, we up in this? Yes. And I was thrilled because, you know, uh, the script was really, real, really well written. Yeah. But also when we got to set, Bradley was like, um, Miss Bradley Cooper, Mr. Bradley of Cooper. Of course, yes. Mr. Cooper, uh, Mr. In his director. directorial debut. <laughs> yes. Debut, um, he was he was super knowledgeable about uh-huh. what he wanted and it created this great scene. But he also said to me, you know, Shangela, I know you know this world. Mm-hmm. Feel free to go there. And if I feel the need to pull you back, I will. Right. And baby, I went there because yeah. it's a drag bar scene. 181 nights a year. Okay. Yes, okay. So uh, it was so much fun. That was your turf. Girl, let's do this. Whose idea was it for you to serve full executive realness while you were doing <laughs> the numbers at the end of the night? Because that was hearkening back to your relationship with Chi Chi Devane on All Stars 3 and your glasses and your whole getup. Yeah. And, well, <laughs> we filmed that well before All Stars 3, but it did give a nod yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah. I will say... Um, in the character, when you're working with hair and makeup, and they had a great wardrobe and yeah. hair and makeup team, I actually did my own makeup for the film. Mm-hmm. But uh, the hair team came with a couple options. And when they showed me that little short rib Brianna cranberry piece yes. that I have on in the film, <laughs> I said, huh. Yes. Well, and I had to say, you wait to finish, Angela. This is the drag bar owner. This is not Shangela. She's working. This ain't, you know, me and my good old Beyonce quaff, because I <laughs> yes. love a Beyonce quaff. Uh, but I, this is a working woman. And this is, and it gave a very, the look was very cabaret, mm-hmm. you know, with the hat and, and the leotard and the jacket, Britney Circus kind of feel. Yes. So Britney I was Circus. like, okay, I'm going with this. Yeah. And look, when you got a mug like this, mama, you can pull off a little piece of cat. Absolutely. Pull it by, off the face. Yes. Let's see it shine. <laughs> I was giving you Monet exchange you, realness. You, the pussy cat wig <laughs> would we call that a pussycat wig or that was more of like a sort of Mary J. Blige well fantasy. Willem calls it a bus driver so <laughs> I don't know I ain't rode a lot of buses is the bus still running is what I want to know is it I th- and okay so listen so you're on set and this is the scene this when you're doing the numbers and Willem has his titty signed it's a spoiler alert <laughs> this will come out in a, in a week or so so they'll all have seen them I know my listeners and they're out seeing A Star is Born fabulous currently um, but this scene where he starts singing and you guys are sitting there and you're listening to him sing, that had to be the gag because he's truly doing it. Well, yeah. And there was so much live performance in this film. Yeah. And even on the days that we were shooting there, it was amazing. It was like being front row for a free Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga concert. Truly. Like she, when she was doing La Vie on Rose, she would sing it. Of course, she's singing it live. Mm-hmm. And they're doing the playback, but she's singing it live. And they would say, okay, we're going to go again. And I was like, yes, yes thank you. Thank go God. again. Yeah. Please go again. <laughs> and they did. And it was it was great. It was like front row tickets. Yeah. And then when Bradley's doing his part, he has such a great presence. So good. Like he's just like, you know, he's Bradley Cooper and he's mm-hmm. gorgeous, but he's also sweet. And, and then he's in this character, Jackson Maine. Yeah. And he's there with the guitar and you're just like. Yeah, you're Swoon. swept away. Yes, yes. You can see it on your guys' faces. I mean, Willem's like mouth is dropped. Like, girl, I had to tell if I was thinking if this woman throws her panties at the stage, <laughs> I'm gonna leave. I'm just gonna get up and leave. I'm gonna have to leave. And we believe that it would happen. We had Willem in the studio a couple weeks ago. Now I know with Willem anything is possible. True, true. true. I don't even want to go there with what happened, but I can just say true. So, were you a fan of Bradley Cooper's before this? Because I'm like, I, I to know that he's this talented is one thing, but I was also just like, he was in my top five as we say yeah like crushes well you're talking about one of the sexiest men alive Truly. okay it's been named it's been said yeah. and also his ability as an actor is fantastic yeah silver linings playbook yeah. even him as a comedy actor in the hangover and those yeah. films i i've always been a huge fan of his as well and then to be a part of his directorial debut Truly. he was just so professional but also very like warm he wanted he created an environment where he wanted you to be able to do your best work yes and that was really as an actor that was like thank you thank you sir yeah and something i really liked about the whole um drag bar scene was 
This is this guy who's a country legend, and he stumbles into this drag bar. But there's really no comment from him or from anyone of like, oh, it's a drag bar. You know right. what I mean? He's just there and he's getting to know everybody. Sure, he's like drunk or whatever. But it did feel like something we haven't seen before where there was no comment on the fact that this is a drag bar. This is, These are gay people. It's just like he was there enjoying everything. Can you speak a little to that, like, like what that was like? And really watching it, it really just feels very celebratory and very loving towards the gay community which I'm sure was important to Gaga and must be important to you. Yeah, it was very that. And it's it's funny you say that because you're right. We don't see that a lot on screen uh, in films and in television. But my experiences in person with people, especially even straight men that come to our shows and because of RuPaul's Drag Race, we yeah. have families that watch the shows and women come with their husbands who they're like, me and him watching, we were so mad you didn't win. You know, yeah. that is a part of my life. So to see that, it gave this real authentic feel as well to the film. And I love the way that it's written uh, in there that he, you know, drag a lot of times the punchline yeah. in movies past. I think it's very refreshing to see where we're going, where writers are being uh, more aware that this is sometimes just the experience. Yeah. This is a slice of life. And I think that's what he was having. Having just a slice of life experience. And I hope it inspires people on how to treat people that you may not be necessarily familiar with, that particular community. It's not always a joke. It's just what it is. Yeah. And you just go in there, you experience it, you accept people for exactly who they are, and we keep it moving. And I think that's what I mean by like, like I was so, you guys have such a big part in this movie because you go to movies like this, like, and as a gay person mm -hmm. and as someone who's like loves drag and like, but you go and you hear Chandra and Willem are in the movie and then you watch it and you guys are real characters in the movie. You appear later on in the movie. Okay, she had to come back. I was like, she got a fourth scene out of this. <laughs> but it's just so, it was so great to see. And like, obviously that's a throwback or a callback to Gaga's own life which her drag friends and her community that she came up through is so important to her so i guess my question is like did she also sort of like what was she like to work with in that back room like was she very down to earth or was it what there was no airs about her she was uh -oh. just back in that old zone let me lay it down for you honey. because yes. you know i love lady gaga i I'm a fan first mm -hmm. before even being, you know, a part, a star in the film with her, a co-star in the film with her. So I was thrilled to be able to work on set with her. And then yeah. when I found out, you know, that she had kind of handpicked me for this role, I was like, okay, I don't want to mess this up. So working with her mm -hmm. in the back room, you talk to Gaga for like 30 seconds and you automatically feel like, Oh, this is my homegirl. Mm -hmm. We're best friends. Mm -hmm. Then you realize, okay, I don't have her cell number, so maybe we're not best friends. Well, are, we, are we at the Stephanie level? <laughs> oh, no, honey. No, 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 no. no. But I will say... <laughs> we but, can uh, claim to be at the no, Stephanie no, level. No, no, I love the Gaga level. Let me, I love that. <laughs> yes. You know, I want to pay all homage and worship to the Gaga. <laughs> yeah. But working with her was such a pleasant, fun experience. You know, when they would call cut between scenes, I would think, you know, okay, she's going to go with her entourage to the trailer and wait. No. She kicked it in the dressing room with us, and she was like, so, Shan, how are you? Really? Shan. Shan. And I was like, oh, I'm good, LG, Miss Gaga, <laughs> you know? And, you know, in that moment, I was like, well, honey, entertain the queen. I felt like a jest yeah, at the court. Right. So I was like, girl. The, and the I heat start, is on. Sister, I started telling story left and right, you know, and just asking questions. I felt like the Oprah. I know she's like, oh, Lord, she's going to get this queen shut up. But I was just so excited to be yeah. there with her. But also as an actress, she's so, um, she's very focused and dedicated to the role mm -hmm. and to herself in doing it. You can see when they're called action, she's prepared, she's ready. It makes you want to pull up and Absolutely. be a better actor as yeah. well. Anyone that, like, I think there was, like, when it first was announced, there were some, like, doubts, like, oh, Lady Gaga's going to do a movie and it's going to be this big deal. Like, we've seen A Star Is Born so many times. Bradley Cooper's first time directing. There were so many question marks. But I said to myself, I was like, anyone who doubts Lady Lady Gaga at all is not a fan mm -hmm. because you've seen her over the years like reinvent herself so many times like come back against everything I mean you see and, in the documentary the struggles that she deals with it's mm -hmm. like this woman is unbeatable well and I think that I attach to her even personally also as a fan in that way because a large part of my experiences especially with RuPaul's Drag Race oh, yeah. has been go get told no come back get better go get told no 
that's all right. Come back. Mm-hmm. Get better. And I think she continues to exceed people's expectations as well yeah. with big things like Coachella and the Super Bowl and just so many amazing things that she's done. It really makes you be like, you know what? I can do that too. Yeah. She's very inspirational. I think that the way you say that about her, I do think that people feel that way about you. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to have you here because I do think that you are such like an example of queer excellence. Oh, well, that, thank you. That I really <laughs> think that pe- and just excellence in general. You know what I mean? Like that people like for example, in the finale of of All Stars 3, when you did your verse, me and all my friends are watching in the bar. We got emotional. We really did because it's like when you, even when you said no, I got the whole world screaming hallelujah. Yes. I was like, you know what though? She does. <laughs> 181 cities, bitch. I mean, that's that's nothing to scoff at. And to think about where you started, where you come in and you're the first one knocked out of RuPaul's Girl, Drag Race. You remember season two? I came in the door with a dream and no makeup and on. No, okay? Was there not a stitch of makeup? <laughs> no. Yes, I had a little, some, just a base but, layer. You know, baby, it was. I thought I was being daytime fish. You know, I gave a little light dusty beat. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. But then, so you come back the, the the next season, and I thought you were great on that season. Well, thank you. But even at that point, I'd only been doing drag for Still one new. year. Mm-hmm. I was super brand new, but I felt like RuPaul had brought me back. I was the first person brought back from another season to compete again. Yeah. So I was like, okay, he's invested in me. I've really got to pull up yeah. on this and do a good job. And so I was like stressed, but I wanted to do well. And I wanted to have fun. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. I, I kept pushing, girl. I got another no, but I you kept gotta. pushing. So th- was the box your idea? Uh, the original box, when I come in, the Christmas box was the production team's idea. Uh-huh. That was all World of Wonder. They're like, it's a Christmas a- episode, and we want you to jump out. And I was like, ready. But they didn't put any breathing holes in that thing. Oh, shut Girl, up. I was just in there sweaty and hot. I was like, come on, Rue. But it was fun, though. So the energy was Shangela energy, and also I'm extremely hot energy. Uh, true. Yeah. Thank you. And you know, <laughs> since then, no box has been safe. I mean, I was holiday box, mailing box. I think children are afraid to eat out of... Cereal box. Yeah, honey. you never know. <laughs> that could be a honestly cereal branding idea. I I'm looking think, over at the team. They're obviously yes. on their phones typing down, yes, cereal brand. There you go. That's you guys are on this. Yes. Charlie's on this. Perfect. Instead of Wheaties, we'll have Wiggies. Yes, okay, yes, Wiggies. Yes, Hallelujah Hoops. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah Hoops. This is your machine. Um, so then you go back, years pass, and you cultivate Shangela, and you become like this kind of like sort of Mm -mm, this is I feel good saying like sort of like a modern drag legend in a way that you are out there all the time all stars three you come in and you are slaying it doesn't end up going your way for reasons that you could attribute to just them wanting to put on a fun show and like having it be the voting or whatever from the other contestants but you know you slay so when you think about it now do you look back on it kind of just like and that was just, are you disappointed that you didn't win? Or are you looking at it like that's a reality show and they're going to pull the stunts, they're going to pull, they're going to do what they want to do? How are you looking back on All Stars 3? Well, in the moment when we filmed it last year, right after that final episode, when I didn't get voted from by the other girls to go from the four to the top two to lip sync, I was like super disappointed yeah. because... I just put so much into coming back and I felt like this will be like the icing on the cake. If I can win this, if I get that lip sync, you know I had a wrecking balls number hundred that was gonna wreck the oh, balls. I, I was, was ready. So curious to know what you would have done because I you had was stunts ready. galore. You had and the lip syncs were so on. Get point. ready for stunts, tricks, shows, and extra. <laughs> I was gonna give it. So when I didn't get to do just didn't get the chance. That's yeah. all I wanted was the chance yeah. to show like I totally could do this. Um it was it hurt, but what I learned in looking back at the season, and even in, I processed all that after we filmed it and then kept working. That's all. Yep. Because I'm accustomed to not getting the crown. So, and I've been working since season two and three. Mm-hmm. You just keep going out there and you keep pushing and you keep letting people know you can be a queen without having a crown. Mm-hmm. Okay. You don't have to have that crown to be the queen. So that's what I wanted to do. I went right back to work. And then when I saw it and saw how it all played out on All Stars, I'm so thankful. I was like so gracious and I am so uh, just sometimes in awe about how many fans really attached to my story. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh, because I didn't win, they're going to not feel as inspired as I wanted them to be. But that I hear from people that has still inspired them. You know, you told me, taught me how to not give up, to keep coming back. And even though you didn't win, you didn't like fall apart. Yeah. Now you're on a 
181 city tour, which is the largest single tour of any drag race contestant in history for yeah. one year. And I'm continuing to get out there. And now here to a star is born, yeah. which is also amazingly awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, looking back at it, I wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah. Maybe the very ending. <laughs> yeah, right. Like if we had one, I'm sure we still would have, you know, booked the stars born. And right. we, you did it before, right? But I came back to have fun. Yeah. And I came on. back and I gave, made some memorable moments in yeah. TV. And I got to finally be the drag queen that I always envisioned myself able to be. And that audience, especially the new VH1 audience, now gets to see that. Yes. Now and that was really cool. to enjoy you at Shangela Diva level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, indeed. And it also is kind of like, in a macro sense, it's kind of a thing of like, you know what, y'all? Life isn't fair. Sometimes you could deserve it. And it doesn't always go your way. Baby, that's the story of my yeah. entire life. You got to think as many highs as I've had in my life. I've also had a lot of low points. Mm -hmm. You know, working in Hollywood, you get told no a million times. I could only tell you how many things that I've been like, okay, this is it. This is my moment. Finally, it's going to break through. And then all of a sudden, it just disappears. And you're like, okay, but you got to keep going. I yeah. broke a leg on stage in New York in mm -hmm. 2012. I, I remember was, this. Honey, I went up for a leaping helicopter death drop. <laughs> and you know, I know the death drop. I taught it to the kids on Dance Moms, you okay? You know <laughs> how to execute the death drop. Thank We've you. seen it done. <laughs> exactly. And I came down and released the leg early for some reason and land on it, broke the tibia and fibula in my right leg. Oh, the tibia to, and the fibula. Honey, that could be twins, yes. drag twins. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Tibia Your and Your drag fibula. daughters, if you, we need you to call in to <laughs> Today, tibula fibula. We have names for you. Or tibia, Wait, the tibia fibula. And I had to have a titanium rod put in the leg with two screws in the knee and two the ankle that I still have to this day. To this day? day? Yes, but I, and I remember being in the hospital here in New York. I was at Lenox Hill. Mm. You know, that's where Beyonce gave birth to baby Blue. Oh, so the good hospital. Thank you, Blue Cross yeah. Blue Shield. <laughs> so, oh my God, uh, same. Yeah, I court, hey girl. <laughs> but I'm on the essential plan. I don't have Shangela money. <laughs> that's that PPO. Yeah. And I had just qualified actually in the Screen Actors Guild for insurance October nice. 1st. Yeah. I never broke anything before. And then October 31st, I broke the leg. So I was Ugh. very thankful for that. But I came back. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to go through physical therapy. I was on a walker. I was on crutches. I was on a boot. But I didn't give up. Yeah. And now this year, I'm still able to death drop and mm -hmm. safely and turn the party <laughs> in cities on pretty much almost every continent except Antarctica. Right. Okay. So literally... Antarctica has to be a destination now at this point. Yes, it we is. We must perform in Antarctica Honey, now. I've already looked it up. There's a <laughs> National Geographic cruise that goes from the tip of Argentina down to Antarctica. But you can only go during the months where it's... Well, Never warm, but you yeah, know, right. seasonal for travel to Antarctica. Okay. And they'll let 12 people off the boat at a time. And I'm going to do my little happy feet number one day. <laughs> it's going to, not this <laughs> year, because it has to number. be like the season is like between, I think, late November through like of February. And Antarctica's nice. Yes, yes, yes tropical. Lovely. Yes, honey, yes. <laughs> okay, well, I'll have to, I guess I have to get a ticket, Joe. I'm no, you can't go that. before me, though, because uh, I got listen. I'm trying to get in the Guinness Book of World Records for the first dragon entertainer to ever perform on all seven continents Jeez. and i just got one more to go that's okay. antarctica i mean here we go do you have a favorite city that you perform in that's they're gotta all, be like yeah well they're different around the world yeah. we were talking earlier i love toronto you know love that toronto. i love brazil everywhere in brazil mm -hmm. i love uh i'm going to some places for the first time australia and london they're always great um but I'm going to be in New Zealand for the first time in December, mm -hmm. Hong Kong, uh, Bangkok, Singapore, uh, and some places in Australia, like Canberra, I've never been. So I have a new uh, one-hour stand-up comedy show called Shangela is Shook. Uh huh. So <laughs> yes, honey, I'm shook this year. So <laughs> yes. I'm going to be taking it there and really excited. So what are we talking about in the show? Is it uh, All Stars 3 related? Is it uh, The show is kind of a roadmap recap of All Stars 3, but it also talks about some other hilarious fun stories and anecdotes that we get in there too. Cool. That's amazing. So just like, because I think it's good for people to hear. You're someone who, when there's something in your way or there's something going down, like that's maybe negative or like there's something, you are a worker. You work through it. Yeah, you have to push. What I learned early in my life is that if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. Mm -hmm. So you got to get out there and go to work. My mom was a worker. She's a military veteran. When she came back, she was a single mom. Um, and I watched her have two, sometimes three jobs at a time, even to the point where one time, like she had taken a night 
shift uh, to make extra money for us. And she was like filling vending machines and she would like load up those, that little dolly with like cases of Cokes. And I would go with her sometimes and she'd be like, no, go home. You have school in the morning. I'm like, no, I want to help you. Yeah. So I've always seen that in my life. I was the first in my family to go to college um, in Dallas. And then I moved out to LA to be an actor. And when I quit working in corporate uh, world to be a drag queen. You worked in the corporate world? Oh, honey, I was PR fish for TGI Friday. You got to be kidding. Yes, Sesame Jack, chicken strips. You were <laughs> out there spreading the good word about I, the Sesame Jack. Thank you very much. Yes, I was. <laughs> yes, I was. But, you know, even at that time, yeah. I still knew that I wanted to be an entertainer. We would have an annual Halloween party. And uh, they put me in charge. Well, they used to have a costume contest, but I turned it into a pageant. Of course. Gay. You know the gays, you honey. We gay get in a job. We and have those intrinsic gay interests and, and like totally. instincts. And yeah. they, they win. Honey, I had pulled <laughs> people from finance and accounting to be on my uh, in my squad for my talent number. I did uh, bring in sexy back as Michael Jackson oh, zombie. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I won. And I remember the time at the time, the CEO of TGI Fridays, mm-hmm. Richard Sneed, he wanted to do an Elvis number. Well, he found the, the gay to help him get it. Yes. So I helped him get his Elvis drag together. <laughs> but then he told me after seeing me in the show, he goes, look, you're great here. Love you here. Mm-hmm. But if you ever have the passion, you should really consider pursuing a career in entertainment. Mm-hmm. You'd be really good. Yeah. And now it's probably the time you should do it. So I'm not, he's like, I'm not telling you to leave us, right. but he was just saying, if that's in your mind, ever something you wanted to pursue, you should do it. Yeah. And I listened to him and I started saving money at that time. And I remember I, at one point I said, okay, that's it here. I love it. But, and I love, I know that people love their jobs there, but that life for me wasn't, I didn't feel fulfilled. You had to take the leap of faith. Honey, I packed up my car, Ella. She was an explorer. Ella mm-hmm. the Explorer packed her up and moved out west. Mm-hmm. And then literally within a year or so, I was going to audition for Drag Race. Yeah. So listen, I feel like why don't we talk about Quip? And we should be talking about it because it's just the way you need to be brushing your teeth. And it's actually kind of changed my life. And I know it's changed Bowen's life. We often talk about how great it is. It's so easy. It's just like, it's the revolutionary method of teeth cleaning. It's actually rule of culture number 346. Quip is the revolutionary method of teeth cleaning. And here's why, you guys. The sensitive sonic vibrations are gentle enough on your sensitive gums that you're not, like, damaging them. I know Henry, my ex-boyfriend, would look at my toothbrushes and he would be like, it looks like a dog used this. I don't know. I'm a hard brusher. I don't know if that shocks you, <laughs> you the fans out there, that I'm someone who, like, <laughs> I don't know, brushes the shit out of my teeth. But... um I do want them to be white. And sometimes that can be counterintuitive when you're abusing your gums with brushes. With Quip, it's like, you know what? Just put it on your teeth, babe, and let Quip handle the rest. A built-in two-minute timer pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides, helping guide a full and even clean. You know, up to 90% of us don't brush for a full two minutes, and we don't even clean evenly. And here's the thing. Like, you thought it was 90 seconds? No, hun. You need to be doing a full two minutes of cleaning, okay? And that's why you need Quip. It was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, affordable, and even enjoyable. I love a little tickle to my tooth. It's an electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers. So here's the thing. You're not just getting the dentist-recommended toothbrush that you need. It's also designed to feel inclined. I don't know. I feel like that sort of worked. Why don't I just get to this call action because you want to just figure out how to order this and you want to stop hearing me talk. I love Quip. You need Quip. And they're backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com forward slash ding dong right now, you get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com forward slash ding dong. Getquip.com forward slash ding dong. Getquip.com forward slash ding dong. Ooh. Ooh, the clubs are ringing. Deck the halls. Imagine if it was a Christmas toothbrush. You could paint it red and green. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure you order it. Bye. Get quip. 
Okay, so this now we've talked a little bit about your background. By the way, I your explorer was named Ella. I had a Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo named Jeff. Yes, so that's Jeff. just the different <laughs> uh, upbringings there. Yes, Jeff is the evident. Jeep. Jeff the Jeep. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to ask you. We ask all of our guests this question. So we talked a little bit about you as a youngster. But this is a question: What was the pop culture? or the culture in your life that influenced you, that made you say culture is for me. And what I say that, what I mean is like, what was the, whether it was like a movie or a particular musical artist or something, that's like your thing that you were like, I feel this in a way that's like defining for me. Mm -hmm. Do you have like something in your life like that? There were a uh, film mm -hmm. one I always loved. Uh, movies like Sister Act, yes. uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, um, I just I love seeing uh, artists on TV that were able to like go into a different character, like whether they were undercover or whatever. Yeah, and it whoopee. was hilarious. Yes, yeah. hilariously funny, yeah. and that was a part of my escape. You know, I grew up in Paris, Texas. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of gay culture or any of that, but uh, I also there wasn't any particular. One particular music artist. I love Tina Turner. I love Beyonce. I figured you loved Tina oh, Turner. Oh, Because we saw the Tina on Snatch Game. Oh, yeah. yeah which is an I, underrated Snatch Game performance. Yeah. I will say that. Even with yeah. the Hallelujahs. Even with the Hallelujahs. <laughs> okay. I don't, don't let Tina see it. But um, honestly, it was less the artist and more music. Yeah. High energy dance music just gave me this freeing feeling. If I could turn on something that had a good beat, mm -hmm. I just wanted to move. I wanted to dance. Yeah. And... I think that is part of the energy of me. Like, I just love a good time. I love when you're just, you know, having fun. And that's why I love being on stage. Yeah. People go, are you exhausted 181 cities? I'm like, no, I get my life. Yeah. You know, and I really do. And then to be a part of this, you know, now to be working in Hollywood as an actor, it's still entertaining. It's the same energy. And the music in this film, too, like all of that is just motivating. It's part of my thread. So I'm... Yeah. That's it. Just for, it's so crazy for your journey to end up at this particular not end up. Obviously, it's still going be <laughs> Thank over goodness, and beyond. Honey, yeah, keep R. it moving. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, and at this moment, for it to be literally a star is born, which is a musical, which is, you know, Lady Gaga. It's her, it's gonna be her breakthrough to the next level. And I I hear you when you say you're not. You're not tired. You're not. Well, you must be tired, but you're not like beat down by it. You're just excited about the 181 cities. How often do you ever get to like just sit back and be like, oh, my God, like I get to actually do this each and every day of my life. And not only that. But it is at the highest level. This movie is going to win several Oscars. It might be nominated for like 11 or 12, I think. You see my mouth just dropping. Yeah. And I'll tell you, um, because I'm on the go so much, I, the London premiere happened. Uh, Ooh, and and you it was stunning. Thank you, boo. Oh, my oh, God. Thank you, my Diego Montoya gal. Ooh. But um, I will, you know, that was on Thursday. And then we had, quickly we popped into the after party and then I had a show at GAY Heaven at 1 a.m. I was on stage. Wow. And then I had a meet and greet right after that. And then I showered quickly to get on my 6.40 a.m. flight because I had a show in Atlanta when I landed the next day. And then I had Latrice's wedding the next day. And then we flew to New York. So I really oh, had no congratulations, had Latrice. I know, right? Dropping that nugget in. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, I didn't really have a big moment to sit and be like, wow. This morning. Wow. Um. I was going through Twitter, and now more people are seeing the film. And I usually I can check like I try to check all my Twitter messages and DMs. Like I'm on that. Yeah, I'm attached to my phone. Yeah, but I had so many, and people were saying such nice things about the film. I almost started crying. I was sitting there in my, in the hotel, and I'm like, okay, girl, pull it together. But I was like, this is wow. Yeah, this is amazing, and not just for me, but just to be a part of this film and to know, you know, how hard I've worked, but not just that, but like to be with Lady Gaga mm -hmm. and Bradley Cooper and just a, an amazing cast and an amazing, and to see the film again last night, I saw it last night yeah, and take it all in. Like, bitch, that is me up That's there. You. And in addition to that, like this is an amazing, it's a great movie. It is flat out. So good. I'm thrown. So the fans, it really is like, it's even in meet and greets and stuff around the world, I'll get messages and notes uh, from kids or from anyone. I, and I read them in the dressing room or later on that night. And I'm like, I'm really, this is cool to be a part of something that is means something to people. Yeah. 
I mean, well, you might not. You've seen it. You saw it last night. Is that was the second time you've seen that it? That was the second time. Well, in my experience seeing it last night, and I saw it at, at a, like a press screening, there was applause when you came out. There oh, really hallelujah. was. And I know tonight, <laughs> I, I said, I told you, tonight I'm seeing it with, I swear to God. Me well, it was like me eight, back there clapping. Just right, so you know. Of course. <laughs> I, th- I thought I felt like a rhythmic clap to Working Girl, the song. Um, but, um, I'm going tonight with like 30 gays. Like I even posted on my Insta story, like the ticket stub. I said, this is when we're going. Come buy a ticket. Let's sell out this theater. So I know everyone's going to go wild tonight when they see you. But even in like the screening, like, and I heard this woman next to me go, that's Shangela. <laughs> to, like, to like her colleague or whatever. That is Shangela. That's from RuPaul's Travels. Shangela. Oh, she was in the know. She was in the know. Like she, had, she had it all. She knew the cast. But, um, it's just crazy. And so I really, I hope that you do give yourself those moments because, and it's just insane to me that you had to do a show at 1 a.m. after the London, after the huge London premiere of A Star is Born. Yeah. You're in a photo with Lady Gaga, Bradley Cooper. Let's get out the dress and do a gig. Ta-da. You, I'm a working girl, honey. Yes, I'm, I'm cashing checks, okay? But in addition, there are so many great fans in London and I wanted to celebrate with them. Of like, let's party. Mm-hmm. And we had a great time, but I'm learning how to take it in. Like, yeah. have a second. I journal a lot. Yeah. So uh, maybe for the memoir one day. Of course. Uh, like Jennifer Lewis says, honey, write it down. Yes. But make sure I, it's dictated and notated. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So I, I did journal a lot about it and sometimes I go back and read it because it's like, Wow, this is a cool moment, but I hope to have many more. You yeah. know, hopefully this is just a great start. I'm hoping to get more visibility um, and just, you know, people to understand that not only am I a drag entertainer, yeah. but I also am interested in working as an actor. Do we have more projects lined up on the pipeline? Oh, you know, sister's always got a job coming, yeah. honey. Yes. I'm actually filming um, an episode for a Netflix series this weekend. Uh, I'm featured in a couple episodes of Alyssa Edwards' new docuseries okay. on Netflix. Okay, I wanted Dancing to ask Queen. about the House of Edwards. How mm-hmm. are things? there things are good oh yeah i Alyssa and i have been friends for god before even there was a shangela i used to mm-hmm. back up dance for her in dallas in the pageants so um it's really cool like to for then i was on drag race and then she was on drag race and we toured together we've been great friends for a very long time so it's really cool to be able to celebrate each other's accomplishments right now yeah as well and then i wish laganja as well she's all over the place i think she just landed in beirut yeah. today to do a show tonight so everyone's on their tracks doing their thing and we always like when we circle back high five girl keep it moving yes. we want to see her on all stars i think laganja i'm surprised I, she hasn't been on you know i do too but you know she's always said that she wants to focus Focus on her dance That's as well. True. She started that Laganja's dance school thing that she did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that she was teaching at Young Arts, a program in uh, Florida. So she's she's on her, and then she was on uh, Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, no, no, no. The, the, uh, uh, so you think you can dance? So you think? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And that was that was wild too. And it's crazy, like like Alyssa and Laganja. It feels like like dance education is really like in their blood. They truly love that. Well, Laganja was a student at Alyssa's school right. and also taught at Alyssa's school in Dallas. I used to back up dance and do our rehearsals at Alyssa's dance studio in mm-hmm. Dallas. So she's created a really great home for a lot of people. And that's why we're so happy. You know, I love her as my friend and so excited for her. Yeah. Have you always been a dancer ever since a young age? Because it seems like uh, you've been... I've always been excited to dance. <laughs> I have never been uh, trained, but I did meet Judith Jameson once at SMU, which is where I graduated yeah, from yeah, in yeah. Dallas. And all my friends, you know, that's where all the gays were, okay? Mm-hmm. All the gays were in the dance department. So I used to go, of course, not all of them, but a lot of the dance department <laughs> yes. was the gays. So I would, when I, I just first came out when I went to college, I was 18. Mm-hmm. So it was a whole new world for me. And a lot of them have been out since, you know, forever. They're from New York and I was from Paris, Texas. So, so it people really from cool. all over this country came to this college, despite yeah. it being in Texas. Well, yeah, the Meadow School of Dance is one of the like most respected dance schools in the U.S. as well mm-hmm. uh, for arts. So, um, yeah, I just remember I took one class over there and I thought, oh, honey, I'm a dancer now. Yeah. I'm a dancer. Yeah. I love to dance. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's a great way to like have a great time and communicate with people. Plus, I know I talk a lot, but Latrice's wedding, me and Bianca had cut the rug, honey. Oh, were all my. the girls at the wedding? Well, uh, it was me, the ones that were there, because it was also during New York Drag Con weekend. Right, right, right. Uh, but and it was uh, in Atlanta. It was me, Bianca, Willem, Manila, 
uh, I'm forgetting uh, Kennedy Jasmine Masters so fun yeah so we all had a great time there. that had to be the dance floor oh honey you know we were, <laughs> move over she didn't even book us but we did a booking okay oh, there we go were we all in drag <laughs> no no um, no one was in drag oh, okay I you was know we say. went but a lot of people at Latrice's wedding did come in drag ah. and it was such a nice thing you know we get to see each other in the clubs a lot or working but to be there like in our little suits and ties and like celebrating our friend and their love for each other Latrice and Chris it was really special how long have they been together many years yeah right? they've been together for a while yeah because I remember on Latrice's season she had this moment where she said she didn't know if she believed in in herself getting married yep. so now we have obviously the turnaround well she said that too during her speech in between the tears it was so, oh, oh so many people were crying it Lord, had to be mercy. So I was like Lord I'm crying over here I'm gonna ruin my good light base powder <laughs> But um, yeah, she said that I didn't. I never thought this would happen for me. I really didn't believe in it. And this person, Chris, has changed my life and changed my mind. And that's really cool to see that. You know, it's been an emotional week. <laughs> Sunday, I mean Saturday, that wedding, and then when I saw Star is Born last Ugh. night, bawling again. Truly, you know, you can't help it. You can't. You really can't. There's so many scenes in that movie where it's just like it, 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 you feel the tears coming down your face, and you didn't even expect it. Well, you know, I was trying to be all professional, so I was doing the quick wipe. <laughs> You know, yeah. when you swipe it like real fast, like yeah. here comes into whoop, and it's gone. But there were so many because the movie is so powerfully emotional. And uh, I, I love that we get to bring some light and fun to it as well. But yeah. it's a great. That's a thing, too. I didn't expect it to be as funny as it is. Well, like, girl, like, was there, I was in it. Well, of course, no, yes, you, of course you're in it. But like, <laughs> even like even like Gaga, like there's yes. a scene where she overpours a shot and just the way she reacts to it is so <laughs> funny. Like Little things that you don't see from her because you never see her out there being the grounded um, Lady Gaga. You know, you see... And for so many years, I thought when people were like, maybe she'll act one day, I was like, but who is she? There needs to be, like, we need to see who that is. And now you truly see who that is. And just, I'm so excited to see more well, of that. Well, in seeing the film, you saw two people at the top of their game yeah. really going in with these characters. I yeah. swear, it was like a master class. The, the performances alone deserve the accolades, whatever they may be, to come. Because you could take... They were amazing together. Truly. Amazing chemistry. But you could take those performances and sit them by themselves and yeah. look at them and be like, oh, she was doing that. Even, especially other people, Sam Elliott, oh. Anthony Ramos. The great, great performances. So good. Andrew I mean, Dice Clay, sickening. Truly great. And like such a believable father to yes. that character. And you could tell... I, I think I read an interview with Bradley that was saying that they had seen major names for mm -hmm. that character. Like, I heard the word De Niro floated through the air. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, but then you meet someone like Andrew Dice Clay, and it's just, it feels so right. Yep. And I love, like, the kind of atypical casting in this movie. Like, you would never think Andrew Dice Clay, Dave Chappelle. Right. You know what I mean? Like Shangela. Just, Shangela. <laughs> but the thing is, I think that is the coolest thing, and I think that's, like, part of another um, credit to his directing mm -hmm. and his eye. It's just, like, he knew exactly what he wanted. He also knew when to listen to her and her instincts, and she obviously said... We must get Shangela Willem for this movie. Like, I'm thankful. I told her when we were together at the Soho House in London. Didn't that sound fabulous? Oh, baby. So fabulous. When we were at the Soho House. Me from Paris, Texas. I to my, well, well, when I was sitting with Lady Gaga at the Soho House in London. <laughs> in my uh, guiche. Yes, in my guiche, darling. Uh, with my mom there, by the way, who had oh, flown so over from Texas. Great. Um, I, she said to me, uh, Shangela, uh, when I saw you on the carpet tonight, this is a true story. Wow. I, I can say this. It's private, but I'm going to say it. She said, when I saw you on the carpet tonight, I looked over and I said, that's a star. Wow. And I don't, you know, I, I was, that's not even where my head was thinking. I just was happy. I was, you know, standing in the course. It was so tight. I was like, I can at least kind of breathe. Yeah, let's sit. But <laughs> she, and I said, thank you so much, but you have no idea. I, I am in awe, like I am bowing in homage and worship to you. You yeah. gave me such a great opportunity. She goes, all right, now keep it going. Yes. She said, keep it going. 
Yeah. And I will forever be grateful to her and to Bradley for what they've given me with allowing me to be involved with this film. There's just so much beauty emanating from her. You know what I mean? Yes. There's just so much obvious love for our community, so much obvious love and passion for what she does. Mm-hmm. And I do feel that from him as well. And it's so interesting. You you mentioned the chemistry between them. You fully believe that they fall in love in this movie. Yes. In seconds. Yes. I mean, like that. there's like that this sequence of them spending Spending like a night together mm-hmm. and they don't sleep together at first it's kind of just very kind of like very meet cute they have this like wild night where these things happen in a bar etc etc cetera, et cetera. and it's just like this is such a and we've seen this a star is born before had you seen the other star is borns yes yeah so we've not seen, all of them but i've seen some of the barbara yeah, yes. she's familiar yes <laughs> um we're familiar with the barbara version <laughs> um but the thing is like it just feels so new and so authentic. And what I feel about the movie is it feels like a big Hollywood movie, but it also feels very small. Like that scene with the cake on her face. Yes. Or the scene in the parking lot. Yes. Felt, it, 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 the way that it was shot was really cool. And it almost felt like, like when you see a really cool indie movie, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was a true testament to the directing and, and everyone who worked on this film. It was, yeah. it was fantastic. And the chemistry, you're exactly right. Because, you know, this is Bradley's, I think, um, modernization of this story. And right. He kind of like revisualized it. And you could see there from the previous versions, this one is like a retake on it. And it's amazing. Yeah. And um, sex. I mean, just the chemistry between the two is hot. Was We were standing there. I was like... Oh, I wish his character had fallen in love with mine, but okay. Yes, I know. I would have, even in his like alcoholic despair, I was like, you can't deny this is still Bradley Cooper. Hallelujah. 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 Honestly. And the thing too is like, I saw it in like, it was a good theater that I saw it in. It had the Dolby Digital. Oh, yes. When you so, feel it in your seat. Okay. For real, because you really think you're at a real rock concert. Like this, like just like, I'm going to straight up, and Charlie is nodding. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, Publicist Charlie, who we love. Yes. Um, What? Why do you win? So you don't like the spotlight? Oh, (laughs) no, he demurs. Um, But you, the sound mixing and the sound editing, listen to me sound like a fucking film uh, guru. I love it. These are the awards that are given out at six o'clock. Yes, Yes. honey. These these are the awards that were cut from this year's broadcast. (laughs) Very important, though. But they are important. I was saying like, like, I saw I with my friend Amanda and I turned to her and I'm like, are we at this concert? I can almost smell it. No, it was because the music is such an integral part of this film because it also tells the story. Um, yes. It, it made me feel like, you know, I've been to every Gaga tour. I've been all of them. Okay. Yeah, you've I, been the fan. I, I am the, okay. Yeah. So, um, it when you're seeing her and she's playing at that piano and it, the camera's right there in that face, but you feel it. You feel the music and it's part of the emotion and that's why this film does have so much heart. That's why people cry yeah. because you are in it. You are in it. And I hope that if anyone watches it, they get to feel it the way that we've seen it and felt it. Yeah. I mean, truly, there's a couple scenes like, not to give anything away, but there's just a couple scenes with like between the brothers... That'll get you. Mm -hmm. And and obviously scenes between them. The final song, there's a certain cut at the end of the song that will destroy Destroy. anyone with a heart. Yep. It's just crazy. And I'm I'm thinking like, I also can't wait for the soundtrack. Oh, like it's coming out, I've I got guess, it on tomorrow. pre-order. You got it? Yes. Well, I don't have this. Right, right, right. But I have it pre-ordered. But you know, I got shallow. That's really all I need. Shallow for the moment. is doing just <laughs> fine, Vern. I didn't know if you get like a special pre order Shangela copy that L- Ms. LG said. I Here, wish you can have LG, LG, send it to me, <laughs> LG, please. We're about to get it. And that's another thing, too, is like you watch the movie and like you hear little snippets of songs and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, what's that? Like that makes yeah. you wait for the soundtrack because, of course, you're not going to hear every whole song. I don't want, I'm about to break into the SNL, uh, well, to a performance song right now, but yeah. there's so many good ones. Like I'm just, and when you see the pre order, there's a lot lot of tracks on there yes so you want to just like click through and get your life yeah and it's like one of those walking through new york kind of albums you know where you had the headsets in mm-hmm. you're like i gotta go from 30th street all the way up to the 60s watch me walk pump it with yes. this album 100 percent. i have a question for you who is inspiring you right now whether it's another queen or like a certain like artist besides lady gaga who we've discussed in full <laughs> um is there someone that you're watching right now out there that you're like okay i think they are I'm going to ramble a couple names to you because I really, I really am. Insp- 
inspired by these people. Um, first and foremost, Jennifer Lewis. Yes. I mean, the legend. The legend. And I'm so grateful and I've been blessed oh, that I get to, you know, I moved into her basement seven years ago and I've never left because I get a master class in Jennifer Lewis. At still all to times. this day? Oh, honey, still to this day. Wow. Rent control. She yeah. always tells me, oh, baby, don't worry. When you come home, your things are going to be at the street because you're too big of a star now. Oh, this is what she says. Um, but she's such, she's like my LA mom mm-hmm. and she's taught me so much. She's been in the business 30 years yeah. and she's weathered the ups and the downs of the world of entertainment. And and still manage to hold on to herself, be successful, and be a good person, and like that inspires me at all times. In addition to her, Beyonce, I saw Beyonce Always. on the run tour uh, just recently in Dallas, and seeing, knowing where she is in her world. And at her level, but the fact that she still gets out there and gives you 110. Everything. There ain't no dial in. There ain't no phone in. She goes for it. Always. It makes me like, oh, Shanji, okay, I got to get to the house. I got to need new costumes. I need to give, I need a new mix. I got to do better. It's inspiring no matter what you do. Yeah. Like, even I do comedy and like stuff like that. But I saw her show, you know, I saw, I've seen her three times, but the most inspiring time I saw her was the four album. She did four shows at Roseland Ballroom in New yes. York. Yes. Small. So I was like 100 feet away from her because oh. you know I got there early. But this was the four album, which to me is genius album. And Jay-Z is sitting up there like in the balcony watching her and she is on top of the piano singing one plus one giving the fantasy. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow, this feels like a moment. Just the sound is all around you giving her everything during end of time. Choreo didn't miss a step. Showing up every dancer being the one. Yep. Two months later, she does the mic drop on the VMAs and she shows that she's pregnant. I was like, are you telling me that this woman was three, four months pregnant when that happened? Unbelievable. Beyonce. 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 And that's all there is to yeah, say. Yeah, so there's Jenna Lewis, Beyonce, and then uh, my good friend, Lena Waithe. Who, oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, Lena and I, this is a fun story. Not a lot of people know this. Lena and I started around the same time as assistants in LA. Really? She was Mark Brown's assistant uh, for a while working on the show Girlfriends uh, for BET and I was Jennifer Lewis's assistant and Mark and Jennifer have been best friends for like 20, 30 years. So they're like, well, since we're best friends, you guys should know each other. So Lena and I would like go out to like lunch or whatever, hang out and then we became really close friends. She wrote the first short film that I ever did about the time my car was stolen called Body of a Barbie. <laughs> yeah, and Lena after I told her the story, she was like, oh baby, I'm writing this into a script and she did and produced it and it got on BET like in a shorts festival thing. This was uh, bad makeup, Shanji, way back in the day. I did my own look. <laughs> and um, and then like my car ran out of gas like twice. She's the friend I called to come pick me up and she would come out there with a gas can. We're on the side of the 101 in LA like pouring gas into my car. Yeah. So this is, I've, I've known her for a while and I know how hard she's worked and now to see her getting her shine and she's such a, a smart person but also a person who gets the job done. Yeah. And she encourages me. Like, I'll be like, Lena, she's like, you know, yo, you know, Lena, she's like, yo, look, you need, you need to get, you need to get your team together. Yo. Cause you know, you, this is your time. If yeah. You ain't gonna do it, bro. You need, bro. You need to get it. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, sometimes she'll tell me like, I got a role for you, but you ain't never here. You on the tour. So when you coming home so you can do your job. And I'm like, I'm coming, mm. Lena, I promise. So I love her so much. And, and, and she inspires me. She's history making. Okay. Yes. Hallelujah. And that is such a cool thing too. When you, when you think, when you have a sense that the community that you're a part of is special. Mm-hmm. And then as you guys start working and working and working and things happen, you're like, wow, I was right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's super special. It is. And it's amazing too. I love being gay. Ooh, I love being gay. Yes. And it's, a, it, it took me a while mm-hmm. because, you know, I grew up in a very Southern Baptist household. I was in church with my grandparents like every Sunday. And you would hear messages like gay is wrong and homosexuality and sin. You're going to hell. So I didn't embrace being gay. I, I thought like yeah. I'm gay. Darn. Wish I wasn't gay kind of thing. And then when I got out there on my own and started like learning about who more of who I was and coming into my own and learning that everything that I do I should love if I'm doing if I'm a good person I'm out there just being myself there's nothing wrong with being gay I'm gay yes. so then I was and on this journey and even being a drag queen 
you just build up even more confidence in yourself. So people who love themselves also inspire me to continue loving myself. I, I'm so inspired by like kids too yeah. that come to our shows and they're like, you know, figuring themselves out or, you know, trans kids or gender non conforming or whatever, because, or even like straight kids that just are like, that's my gay friend. I love her mm. because I didn't get that until later in my life. No. So to see it happen for people who are younger, I'm like, good for you. Yeah. Good for you. And it also takes it there. I, I've spoken with many people on this podcast that, that, you know, sometimes looking at that generation, there is that little part of you that's like, oh, wow. If yeah. only I had been born 15, 20 years later, five years later yes. sometimes. It's like I could have had that. But you have to be grateful for the adversity. You do. Because it made how, me... maybe you wouldn't be the workhorse that you are. True. I tell people that all the time. They're like, don't you wish you would have won Drag Race 3? I said, no. I wasn't. Apparently, I wasn't ready for it at that point. Mm. And even to this point when I didn't win All-Stars 3, that wasn't in the cards for me. But I've never given up. And that means something to me, and hopefully it means something to someone else as well. And I think it's really cool how, like, that's why I love being a part of this movie. Because yeah. somebody, some little gay kid, is going to be able to go down to the Paris, Texas Cinema Movies 8. Yes. And see yes. on one of those screens, there's Shangela, who grew up right down the street, mm -hmm. you know, in this community, went to St. John Baptist Church. And there she is as a drag queen living her best life yes. in this film. So not only does it mean something to me to be able to work as an actor, but it's a message as well that there is acceptance out there for you. Absolutely. It's actually, you know what it is? It's literally a very Jennifer Hudson narrative. Oh. It's I, like we did not win the gig, but I we stole this, the whole show. <laughs> I applauded for her when she sang her song in Dreamgirl. She better applaud for me when I come on that screen. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Oh my God! That's a, uh, what we need is you guys to host the Oscars, you and Willem. How about that? Shit? Oh, I love that. Host the Oscars, host Miss Universe, Miss America, yeah. host it all, honey. Hallelujah. We are, again, we're saying yes to gigs. So. Yes, we are. We're available. I love 2019. it. Twenty okay. nineteen. <laughs> 2019, here we come. When does the tour wrap up? December 31st. My last oh. night is New Year's Eve in Columbus, Ohio at Axis Nightclub. Come on, so, Columbus, Ohio, yeah. getting Shangela for New Year's. They, surely, they actually have Shangela and Alyssa Edwards together. Well, wow, that place is going to light on fire. It is going to be great. <laughs> well, not with me in it all. Yeah, no, after, right after we leave. Um, okay, so we're going to do a segment that we do to wrap up the show. It's called I Don't Think So, Honey. You already know what this is, listeners, so we take one minute to rant against something in culture, pop culture, whatever, that we think needs addressing down. It can be anything, big or small. I'm going to go first. HPJ is going to thank you. Oh, we you. have a timer. We That's have a serious. timer. It is one minute. I'm going to go first, and um, I'll 30-second myself. How about that? Go off. Ready? Here we go. This is Matt Rogers. That's me. My I don't think so, honey. Time starts now. Okay, bitch. I don't think so, honey, when no, something is overbooked. If there is a number of seats, book that many people. And I especially mean this for planes. Because if I paid for a seat and then I'm going to have to tell my mother, hey, girl, pick me up at 3 p.m. at the airport. I slip, you know, the one. And she shows up and I'm not there because you overbooked. I don't think so, honey. You also potentially maybe I was at um, uh, like a couple screenings and they didn't have enough seats. OK, this is this is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. Not that one, another one. But I'm not going to be sitting on the ground. But luckily, we did end up with a great seat because some people didn't show up. But I don't think so, honey. The fact that I might have to sit on the floor, I need a thing for my, for my juice. I need, a, it wasn't a juice, it was a slushy. But I need a little cup holder for it and something to put my popcorn down. Don't overbook, only underbook so I can put my legs on the seat in front of me. Until then, I don't think so, honey. Boom, and that's one minute. You did that. Okay, Ooh. I got a little lost along the way because no, you um, had to get something off your chest, honey. No, I understand. because can, can I tell you, like, <laughs> whenever I hear a story about someone buying a ticket to an airplane on mm. an airplane and then they have to get moved when they paid the same money as everyone else, don't overbook. Mm -mm. Southwest Airlines, I'm looking at you. Don't that, worry, I said it, not you. That's why I love me some Delta, honey. Oh, oh are you a Delta queen? I'm Delta Diamond Fish. Yeah, Delta <laughs> Diamond Fish. Delta Diamond Fish might be the title of ep.
<laughs> that might it. have to be what it is. Okay, so I'm thrilled because Shangela, are you ready to do it? I don't think so, honey. Oh, let me see what I'm going off about. I'm going off. I okay, know you I got can one. go off. Okay, so this is Shangela's I don't think so, honey. And her time starts now. Okay, I don't think so, honey. Miss Uber Eats. When I order something <laughs> in the bag and I tell y'all I order french fries and my burger and my soda, when I get my bag and you have disappeared and I don't have all the things that I needed in my bag Mm-mm. and you know I was hungry for my meal. Now, my meal should show up warm already okay Mm -hmm. because i've been tracking your process and when i'm looking at six minutes and then it says four minutes and then it's back up to six minutes Uh -uh. did you make a pit stop for gas Mm -mm. where are my things Mm -mm. and when i order french fries i'm gonna need to have some ketchup Mm -hmm. now that should have been known why did i have to write ketchup (laughs) on the order you should know if a lady orders french fries you bring her some ketchup and might as well want to throw some mayonnaise in the bag too because i like mayonnaise as well because let me tell you something i'm sending my hard-earned money over here Uh okay for to put my process my mind i didn't want to leave the house 15 seconds wanted you to bring my nice things and I paid for it with my things because you want to know why because I don't have a sugar daddy I never had a sugar daddy oh. if I want a sugar daddy I can go out and get one because I am what Five seconds. sickening and with Uber Eats I still might be hungry hallelujah <laughs> and that's one minute wow iconic and it's actually rule of culture number I'm going to say 52 if a lady orders french fries there should be ketchup okay I Miss like Uber Eats thinks. thank you I also love personifying it as Ms. Uber Eats. Because yeah. I did see a woman, like, her glasses on, kind of, like, softly yeah. doing her job. Like, Ms. Uber Eats, you got to shake. She just up. picked up the bag and then dropped it in my hand and hit it because she knew I was going to hit no tip. So she was like, I already got my delivery fee. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm doing the bare minimum, <laughs> Ms. Uber Eats. Okay, so this is what I have to say. Obviously, you know where I stand on the movie Your Star is Born, but go out there and see it for yourself. I'm actually going to go see it again tonight. As I was telling Shangela before, my mom also texted me and said, I got tickets for us Friday night. So that'll be the third time. And I did also promise my friend Sudi I'd go with her on Sunday. So are we going a what? Fourth time? That's why you can't stand up Sudi, no man. We may. No, we can't be standing up Sudi. <laughs> um, this was such a pleasure and honor to have you on. Thank you, you so really, much. You really are just like... Ugh. I mean, I don't have to tell you you were my favorite on All Stars 3. You were also my favorite on season three. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Back. That's my boo. That's the Thank one. You. I actually, we were, I was watching with Henry, my boyfriend at the time. Yes. And um, I was like, I think Shangela should win. And he was like, I like Manila. And I was like, this is over. <laughs> <laughs> we have divided a mini family. We but have you divided know, a mini family. But you got to know, me and Manila reconnected at the wedding. After many times of reconnecting, I love her so much. We had so much fun. She's married now. So oh, maybe to Henry. Come on. Oh, I'll have to, I know he's with someone. <laughs> no, she's with Mike. She's with Mike. Oh, his name is Mike. Her name is Mike. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, this is Shangela. This is Matt Rogers signing off. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening to Last Culture Recess. Go see A Star is Born, or else you're far from the shallow now. Yeah. Oh, That's I think Bradley top. Cooper fish. Far from the shallow no, now. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I love the lilt. So why did they put me on the album, girl. Come on, we need the working girl on the album. <laughs> Thank you, Shangela. Forever <laughs> Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Dog. Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original Dog. podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe Dog. to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your Dog. podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page on Facebook.